to like a Leaders Network um, webinar. With us today, um, we are partnering with ATB Financial to bring you a session on building your career through a strong personal brand. So I'll be your moderator. My name is Jonah Zankel. I am a third year um, Schulich leader at the University of Calgary. I'm studying applied math and economics, and I'm currently working in emerging digital banking technology with ATB. Um, so I wanted to partner us with somebody who I think has lots of experience in um, branding and LinkedIn and how we can make those work uh, for us as we pursue our academic and future goals. So I'm going to hand it over to Shazia, and um, if you just want to hit the green check mark, if you can all Hi. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Jonah, and thanks everyone for, for joining the call today. Um, it's going to be a pretty packed uh, hour of time, kind of walk through some content that I have around um, social branding and how to kind of put it on the website itself, and including a couple of video clips as well, and so um, hopefully they'll provide you with a really good boost of that. Um, we'll just ask everyone to go ahead and please mute your um, your line if you're on uh, a landline or a cell phone. We should hear a little bit of audio. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so just a little bit about myself. So I'm a recruiter with HB Financial here in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, I support the Small Business Banking Group and recruit for uh, a group all over Alberta. I've been a corporate recruiter for about the last three and a half years and been with ATB for about 15 months. And I have started a career coaching business about two years ago because um, we we see a lot of mistakes as recruiters in our in our day to day roles and review a lot of resumes in my in my last three and a half years. And although I, I haven't been a student myself for some time, I remember clearly what it was like uh, trying to get noticed um, either in my undergrad or after post graduation um, after my master's program. And so through the, the course of my work and my experience, I, I started what I call my passion project, and it's a blog that I write that really focused on helping uh, job seekers navigate through the recruitment process as they know how daunting and confusing it can be, and especially when you're just coming out of, of school and, and looking to make your mark on the world, whether continuing on in research and academia or going into industry, I think um, having a competitive advantage is really going to be important. Uh, to make sure that you are one step ahead of the competition. So uh, my entire platform and what I speak about is really around uh, differentiating yourself as a potential candidate or employers to notice you for the right reasons. Um, so our agenda is, is it, like I said, pretty packed. And um, we will, of course, have lots of room up at the end for questions. Uh, but really the, the focus is around how to create a strong personal brand for yourself through online social forums. So really job searching in in your career. Uh, sorry, so let's just backtrack there a little bit. So really creating a strong personal brand for yourself through online social forums um, is important because job searching and advancement in your career, no matter what kind of a focus you have, is just so much more social now. And having the ability to cement yourself as an expert and create relationships with people in industry and academia is so much easier now. And it's incredibly um, influential, the type of reach and the type of impact you can have by putting a little bit of focused effort towards these platforms is really going to go a long way. So our agenda is going to be really focused on those things. Um, talking a little bit about why your resume really isn't enough anymore uh, in today's very social world and, and given the economy and how many applicants are really out there looking for opportunities. Uh, talking a little bit about your personal brand, um, what it is and why you should really invest in it. And going into a little bit more with, with blogging and, and LinkedIn and, and talking a little bit about some of those platforms that can really elevate things for you in a powerful and impactful way. And then, of course, some, some room open for questions at the end as well. 
So why is your resume not enough anymore? I think that um, it's really safe to say that once you're coming out of school, and again, no matter the focus, whether it's research or it's going into industry, you're graduating with a lot of students that have very similar qualifications, backgrounds, um, education, and even experiences than you might have as well. There are a lot of things that are going to be important, including all of these things that you do with respect to the network within the Schulich network, um, your GPA, the school you attend are all very important. But in this day and age, they're really not enough to help you stand out as much as they maybe used to be. Uh, so why is it important to do some investment in these social platforms and, and do a little bit more of that homework? It's really to provide some context behind who you are as a person. If you're putting in an application through an applicant system for a role or if you're connecting through the university to do some sort of a research role, um, you know, depending on the relationships you have, sometimes that resume is just that piece of paper and it's really providing no context around who you are. And so doing a little bit of work and effort into that capacity really differentiates you from the potential thousands of applications that you could be um, up against and, and some of the competition that's out there in the marketplace. So your personal brand, um, you know, what is it? It's, it's really the equivalent of um, your personal, what I call your personal value proposition as an employee. So whether you are gainfully employed, um, you know, fast forward a few years into your career, or you're just coming out of school and you're starting to look for those opportunities, having a really clear idea of who you are, essentially your story, both on a career and personal side, what value you offer in terms of your strengths and your accomplishments, and where you want to take your career is really vitally important to creating a competitive advantage for yourself. Um, so I always say it this way, if I was to meet you for the first time today and ask you to tell me a little bit about yourself, how would you go about answering the tell me more about yourself question? Would you relate to being a post-secondary student, a Schulich leader, um, attendee or participant or part of that network? Uh, would you consider yourself to be a lifelong learner, um, an economics junkie, uh, ambitious person, passionate about developing knowledge in stem cell research, uh, an athlete, an Excel whiz, a travel addict? How would you kind of describe yourself? And I think the important elements of a strong personal brand really are beyond, like I said, um, you know, less to do with your schooling, your GPA, and more about what you do with what you have. So what are you doing with the education that you're, you're, you're learning, with the knowledge that you're gaining? Are you doing things that kind of go a little bit above and beyond? And it's really, really important um, in, in your personal brand to think about it this way. It's all about the feeling that you want people to walk away with when they meet you or they look at any one of your public profiles. So whether that's your resume, that's your Twitter page, that's your LinkedIn page, um, those strong elements of a personal brand really need to be consistent uh, in all the communications that you have, all of those platforms that are public and accessible. They need to be authentic, really showcase who you are as a person and, and genuine to, to your personality and, and what you want people to think about you when they, when they connect in those capacities. Um, they need to demonstrate your passion and interest and, and really align with the things that you're doing in your education and the goals that you have for your career. And I think most importantly, to keep it on the genuine and authentic side, really showcasing your personality. Those are some of the most important things that uh, need to be present in, in those communications and those platforms that you're putting together. So why invest in it? You know, I think, like I said, with the current economic downturn, um, it's really great to be able to find ways to get ahead of the competition and secure opportunities and connections even before you graduate and you're ready to go into the next step. Um, I love this quote by Tom Peters. I think it really speaks really well to the importance of the personal branding, and I'll just read it out for you, but it's regardless of age, regardless of position, of the business we happen to be in, all of us need to understand the importance of branding. We are CEOs of our own companies, me incorporated, and to be in business today, and whether, again, research, industry, whatever it is that you're focusing on, our most important job is to be the head marketer for the brand called you. And, you know, again, it, creating these social platforms and doing a little bit of homework to ensure that things are showcasing who you are and, and, and showcasing your personality helps create a little bit of that competitive advantage in the marketplace. Um, there's relevant, authentic ways to stand out, and you can do that through some of the things we'll talk about soon. Uh, it really demonstrates as well a commitment to developing skills and an expertise in an area that you're really passionate about. So if you're passionate about one particular area that you're learning um, in your education, 
you know, by focusing some of the way in which you're presenting yourself in some of your platforms, it showcases a commitment to, to this line of work, to whatever it is that you're, you're interested in. It adds life to your standard job application. Again, it gives you that context and that personality that a lot of job seekers don't recognize that when you're looking at applying for opportunities, uh, sometimes it can get lost in the shuffle because there could be hundreds of thousands of uh, potential applicants that are applying for the same job. Um, I'll give you an example of, of us here at ATB. We have a, a pretty active summer student program where this year we're hiring about 20 students. And in the last month or so that we've had our openings um, actively open, we've had about 3,500 applications for 20 jobs across ATB. And so how do you stand out amongst all of those 3,500 potential competitors, right? And again, it provides an authentic forum for people. And, and I often say that this is such a, a beautiful thing for someone that may identify as more introverted. Um, I myself am an introvert. I am a recruiter, so I kind of have to fake it till I make it every single day and kind of put on a different side of my personality and showcase that. But having a platform through my social networks, through LinkedIn and through Twitter, it really allows me to build confidence in my skill set in my writing, and it allows me to create a voice for myself that doesn't necessarily mean it's me showing up at networking events. It's really allowing things to do the work behind the scenes. So um, a lot of what we'll talk about is really setting yourself up for success so that when you do go into those events where you're meeting people face-to-face, -face, you have something to fall back on that you can showcase to the world that you've got some expertise and things to demonstrate uh, in terms of your knowledge. So a lot of things that in terms of the, the time we, we spend on the platforms, um, you know, we'll spend a lot of the time on, on personal blogs and LinkedIn in this, in this session, but there are really a lot of opportunities to start um, very small if you're not really sure exactly how to begin doing this. I think it's a really interesting um, way to start is by curating content that you see that might be related to the area that you're interested in. So either through Twitter, through Facebook, or your LinkedIn profiles. Um, sharing status updates, doing, um, you know, tweeting articles, pieces that are of interest to you that seem like they would be of value to the people in your network. Uh, those are all really fantastic starting points to get you focused in the right direction and get your feet wet in terms of this whole space. Um, and really, the most important thing is making sure your online profiles represent you, and it's not that difficult to do. And really, the, the important thing to keep in mind is that those profiles really travel with you wherever you go. And so they can oftentimes be the thing that makes or breaks your opportunities and your chances for, for getting noticed in the right way. Um, having a really good summary or bio of yourself and keeping it, like I said, consistent across all of your profiles, whether they be a personal blog, your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, is going to be really, really important. Um, doing things like adding awards that you've won, articles that you've written or been mentioned in, um, keeping it consistent in terms of the content that you're writing, um, anything that showcases you as a person professionally, having that in all of your platforms is really going to create that, that consistent uh, brand that you're going to need to, to showcase yourself in the right way. Um, I, I always think that it's important to spend a little bit of time on this, and so in the beginning, make it a small project for yourself to polish your online presence. Um, start off by looking at other profiles and, and even plagiarize ideas that you see that might be of interest that, that sound like they could be, you know, people that have done it really, really well. There's nothing wrong with going in and reviewing other people's profiles and kind of getting a feel for what they've done um, and seeing how you can kind of copy those best practices and, and use them for yourself. And, you know, once your profile is polished and ready to go, look at who to connect with, who to follow, who to retweet repost content from, that starts to build a network through very basic, simple engagement. Things like liking, sharing a person's content. Um, it just kind of brings you one step further towards um, adding to your own network as well. And so we'll go into a little more detail on some of these pieces around the personal blogs and LinkedIn. But like I said, if there's something that you want to do and you don't really know where to get started, a great place is, is Twitter. Even setting up a, a separate account for yourself that's really focused professionally, and retweeting content that you think is going to be really relevant to people in your network. It's a really, really great way to start building a following and building a network in that virtual capacity. So going on to a little bit further in terms of blogging, so this is something that is very near and dear to my heart in terms of um, something that's given me 
a significant platform for my own career um, and something that I highly recommend um, students especially start to explore, um, especially if you're in a position to, to start to think a little bit differently about some of the things that you're learning uh, throughout your education. It really starts to help you shape your online and your digital footprint. It gives you the opportunity to sort of push those boundaries outside of academic writing. One of the things that I, I, I learned in grad school was that, you know, a lot of times the things that I really enjoyed writing about were those opportunities where I got to do a lot of critical reflection and thinking about the learnings that I was, I was you know, reading and the papers that I was digesting. And I loved blogging after grad school especially because it was a creative space for me to do things in my own way, in my own language, and the things that really resonated with me in the right way. So it, it allows you to kind of push those boundaries outside of academia to give you that, that ability to think differently and, and reflect on the things that you're learning. Um, and it really gives you what I would call a very brag-worthy achievement to include on your resume, on any sort of applications that you're putting out there. Um, and it gives you the ability to round out that personal brand in, in a way that most people don't actually explore. And you don't have to be the best writer. You don't have to necessarily, you know, feel like that's something of a strength, but just have really great ideas and a passion for something, and that really comes across on the page. They don't have to be very long. It doesn't have to be a lot of extensive content or writing on a really regular basis, but sometimes when the inspiration hits you, there's an opportunity to just put something out there and, and see what kind of a reaction you get from people. So it really, really is easier than a lot of people think. There are a lot of great free platforms out there that you can actually go out and create your own domain names, um, choose from a lot of free design templates, um, and really easily push out some of the content to your Facebook, your Twitter, and your LinkedIn accounts so that you're not having to do the work twice. Um, I think that it's one of those things where you really put yourself out there and you fake it till you make it. You try different techniques in terms of the content that you're writing until you find something that works for you, until you find a rhythm that, that's really good for you. Um, that consistency in your messaging are really key, so writing about things that are very aligned with what you're passionate about and what your expertise of area might be is going to be really important. And write on something that really speaks to you personally. I think it's important to ensure that it's something that gets you fired up. Maybe you have a perspective on a particular area within your learnings that really gets you intrigued and you want to explore a little bit further, that's a really great way to start. Um, I remember when I first started my blog, I had all of these great intentions of writing once a week, and I was given a really great piece of advice to not overcommit, to not set yourself up for failure in that way by expecting that you're going to have original, fresh content to always be creating. So set yourself up for success and, and really have a plan of attack. Um, you know, sit down once a month and come up with ideas about things that you might want to consider writing about and find those opportunities where you can and the inspiration where you can by watching TED Talks, reading some content online, getting inspiration from other, other bloggers as well and kind of getting a feel for what people are doing and how they're doing it really well. I think there's a difference between somebody that wants to do this for a living and as a business and someone who's doing this to kind of add value to a job application or a personal brand. And so when you're looking at it from the personal brand perspective, it's not about quantity, it's about quality, and you don't have to push yourself to be doing posts on a very regular basis, but do it consistency, consistently enough so that your followers know what to expect. And I think it's really important to not hoard, hoard knowledge or hold back on opinions that you know, may not necessarily be the norm. Um, if you're passionate about something, I think you'll always find an audience to engage with you on it, and whether your opinion is popular or not, it starts a dialogue, and I think it's a really important thing to be able to set yourself apart. Um, you know, try to find that balance between that critical thinking perspective that's adding a really fresh perspective to the industry, and maybe not being controversial, but just adding a different flavor that maybe people haven't necessarily thought of. It's a really fantastic way to just get a conversation going and build your network with people virtually that way. Um, you'd be amazed at how many people start to connect with you and start to look at you as a subject matter expert once you start having those dialogues and that conversation. So for some inspiration, there are a number of blogs that I've included here um, that are all from individuals that are you know, millennials and kind of maybe identify with a lot of you on the call here. Um, some really great pieces there that um, we'll send out this link or this PowerPoint slide deck after the call, and you can kind of look through some of those blogs and, and see what other people are doing and how they make it work for them. 
So if blogging is not necessarily your thing, but you still want to find a platform to be able to express yourself and um, network in a professional capacity, um, LinkedIn is one of those tools that I think everyone should, should invest a little bit of time and energy um, and pay attention to. So from my perspective as a recruiter, it's really revolutionized the way that I do my job. Um, and I think it's a very, very powerful tool on the other side of things when you are a job seeker looking to make a mark and enhance your capacity to get noticed for the right reasons. So, you know, some reasons for why there's 400 million members worldwide that are connected on this network of LinkedIn. More than 40 million of those 400 million are actually students and new grads. Um, it's the fastest growing contingent on LinkedIn, so really want to be where your fellow students are. 94% of recruiters, like myself, are actively using LinkedIn to search for, connect with people. I've used it before to connect with students. Um, it works incredibly well when you're active on there and you're actually engaged on, on, on the platform. And 77% of all job openings are actually posted on LinkedIn. Job openings. It's important to know that. Um, I always say, too, it's really interesting to consider um, if you think about LinkedIn as your digital resume that really just never sleeps. It's really, it's there, it's working for you in the background. You don't have to be on it on an extremely regular basis, but if you have something that you've put a little bit of effort and time into crafting, um, it's always going to work for you in the background. So really good food for thought to consider, um, you know, why you should consider looking at it. So why should you care? Um, what is it about LinkedIn that, that's, um, you know, something that you'd really want to consider? Uh, I think for, for my perspective as, an, as, a, as a recruiter, it's one of those things where you can showcase to potential employers that you really take initiative about your own career, that you're putting it into your own hands, that you're finding ways to stand out and to network in a really meaningful way, and you're letting that platform do a little bit of the work for you. Again, it provides a ton of context to your paper-based application, so your resume is that two-page piece of paper. Your LinkedIn profile has a lot of capacity to give you a little bit more life um, to, to that standard application. One thing I love about the platform that I don't think a lot of job seekers necessarily think of when they first consider LinkedIn is that it is such a great platform for researching companies and researching people. So you can actually find a ton of information out there on potential companies that you're interested in. You can look to see if there's a particular individual in a company that you may want to connect with that could be a potential future mentor, potential future boss. You can kind of get a feel for who they are and how they moved up in their career. And, and get an idea of what their particular career path may have been. Um, I have a lot of individuals that reach out to me um, because of my blog and, and the career coaching stuff that I do through LinkedIn, and it opens up a, a dialogue and it bridges that gap and, and allows people to really connect and, and gain advice and perspectives and build a relationship that they never really would have done had it not been for this platform. And the best thing, I think personally, is that it really gives you first-hand access to these incredible thought leaders in your industry and, and beyond that. There's a ton of industry leaders that are on LinkedIn that actually regularly post original content on their own life experiences, their own perspectives with respect to how they've gotten to where they've gotten to in their careers, um, what they're doing at their particular companies, really, really interesting things that you can, you can follow and really learn beyond um, you know, just what, what you can see on the, on the platform of people's pages. I'm just going to show you a really quick video on, on LinkedIn, and it's really focused on LinkedIn for students, and, and I think um, is, is really going to be beneficial to understanding um, and driving the point home a little bit more as well. So just give me one second. I'm just going to see if I can make this work again.
I hope everyone was able to hear the, the audio content on that video. Um, we'll send out the links to those videos that I'll be showing um, as well with the, with the PowerPoint deck in case it didn't come through clearly. But hopefully that kind of drills home the point around why LinkedIn is really important, especially at this stage of, of your life and your academic and professional careers. And so just a little bit of insight from the perspective of a recruiter on um, some things that people should and shouldn't do when you start putting together your LinkedIn um, page. And one thing to note is at the end of this uh, presentation, we do have some links that include um, profile builders and how you can kind of get started if you're starting completely from scratch when it comes to LinkedIn. Um, and some of this information might be information you probably already know. Uh, some of it might be uh, things that you uh, hearing for the first time, so hopefully you'll be able to get some, some information and some insight from the way a professional recruiter will look at your potential page and individuals that you might want to network and connect with as well. So some do's, um, and some of these things may seem really obvious, but you'd be surprised at, at the things that we do see. Um, of course, putting up a professional picture of yourself is, is incredibly important. I think it, people put a lot of um, uh, effort into thinking about this, and it's actually not that complicated. We see it all the time where people just take um, get a friend or a coworker or st fellow student to just take a photo of you with an iPhone or a smartphone, um, just so in a white background is usually best. Um, face forward, smiling, um, just inviting. I think it's really important to put that picture on there because it, I've, I've heard once an analogy of having no photo on LinkedIn is like walking into a networking event with a bag over your face where you really just don't get that, that context around who a person is. So you'd be surprised how many selfies we see and how many group shots that we see. So really just keeping it simple, clean, by yourself and smiling um, just so you can showcase a little bit of who you are. It's really important to include a headline that clearly states what you seek and who you are. Uh, I see this all the time where job seekers who are actively looking for opportunities will just write in their headline, Joe Smith, actively seeking opportunities. It actually doesn't tell me anything about what type of an industry that individual is in, what it is that they're looking for. Um, so it's really important to make sure that that is clear and, and showcases exactly what kind of an industry you're in. Um, make sure you check your dates and that your profile is really consistent with your resume. So one really great place to really start building your profile is by taking your resume, your current resume, and just doing a little bit of a copy and paste into your LinkedIn profile and then kind of building from there. And so just making sure that those dates are really consistent um, because recruiters do double check all of your kind of platforms. We do Google you um, as much as it, it might pains us to admit that. Um, we, we really like to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and, and making sure that everything you're showing up in terms of your social platforms and your profiles is consistent and it showcases that you are professional in your, um, in your sort of day-to-day -day activities at work. Um, the summary section is really, really important because it's kind of that first impression. Uh, we think of it as kind of that written elevator pitch. So typically a good rule of thumb is three to five short paragraphs. And imagine you know, you're in an elevator with a CEO of a company that you really want to work for. You're standing you know, in somewhere where someone influential is going to be talking to you and you have 30 seconds to give them a rundown about who you are and what you do. And that's kind of how you want to focus your, your summary section. Um, it's really important to use keywords to kind of become search engine optimized. So all recruiters that, most recruiters that work at, at larger companies have um, LinkedIn recruiter licenses, which means we have access to the entire network of 400 million people. And we do a lot of searches kind of behind the scenes on LinkedIn uh, to try to find people that match what we're looking for when it comes to certain roles. And so by going on to job postings um, of areas that you might be interested in, it's, it's a good idea to go on and look for keywords um, that relate to the competencies related to that job and put in those words in your resume as well as your LinkedIn so you can be found a little bit easier. Um, additional profile section is really important, especially if you're a student, if you're just starting out into your working career, uh, including things like your school, your projects, your GPA, any languages that you speak, any volunteer work that you do. Again, it allows you to really round out your, your profile and your experience. And it's really cool to be able to get this customized URL. There's a way to do it. There's that link I, I, uh, I referred to that's going to be at the end of the presentation. And it'll show you exactly how to get this custom URL so that when people search your full name, um, it comes up a little bit easier in Google searches instead of um, the standard uh, URL link that LinkedIn will give you, which is 
a bunch of numbers and letters and a bit of gibberish. And so getting a customized URL is going to be important to help you um, come to the top of the list in terms of your LinkedIn profile when people are Google searching you. And some more do's. Uh, this is really important, especially when you're starting to build out your network. It's important to make sure that you're doing so in a very targeted and strategic way. So not just ex going and, and connecting with anyone that you think might be interesting, but making sure that the people that you have in your network on LinkedIn really align with the things that you are focused on as well and the things that you are looking to do. Um, I always say, suggest that this is a really great thing to do when you're connecting with you know, strangers or people that maybe you've met once or twice. Perhaps you were at a conference um, and you met someone and you want to connect with them. Or perhaps there's somebody that is someone you admire their career and you'd really like to get into their network so you can be a part of the things that they're doing. Uh, there's an opportunity to customize your invitation and really focus on you know, telling that individual why they should connect with you, what's in it for them, and there's an opportunity to do that when you're sending out your invitations on LinkedIn. Um, be really mindful about what you like or comment on because everything that you like or comment on can be seen by your entire network and, and viewed. And so it's important to just always be mindful of keeping things um, professional, making sure you're not getting into dialogue and conversations that could be seen negatively. Uh, really important to ask for recommendations. There's a, a way to do this through LinkedIn um, when you can go out and ask people that you've worked with, maybe former professors, um, fellow students, to provide you recommendations to round out your profile a little bit better. One piece of advice that I always recommend is if there's an area that you want someone to highlight in terms of perhaps your research skills, your verbal communication or your presentation skills or something, you can customize the recommendation request to ask that individual to you know, provide a recommendation for you that's focused really on that particular area. Um, so you can kind of round out the recommendations in a way that builds your profile in your own way in the way that you want people to see you. Um, I always recommend to audit your profile as regularly as possible. Check your privacy settings and make sure you know what people are seeing. Um, and the same goes for this, is Google yourself every once in a while to see what kind of information is coming up there. Are you writing blog posts on, on different networks? Are they showing up? Um, when you Google yourself, are you, is your LinkedIn network showing up right away? Or other things that you don't necessarily want to be seen showing up? So making sure that you do that on all of your social profiles. A uh, really great way to get noticed is to sh um, go ahead and join related industry groups, provide some opinions on things, start conversations. That's a great way to virtually network with people and kind of get a dialogue going. Um, and again, the curating the content, sharing content you feel is really relevant to your industry and with your network is going to be a great way to cement yourself and to continue to further go down the path towards creating your own original content on LinkedIn. So about, I think, a year and a half, almost two years ago, LinkedIn introduced um, a publishing platform. And we'll go into a little more detail in that, into that in a minute. Um, but that's a, it's a really great opportunity if you're not interested in being a regular blogger, it's something that you can explore. So some quick LinkedIn don'ts, um, some things that, again, we see as recruiters that you might want to try to avoid. So as much as possible, avoid leaving gaps in your LinkedIn profile. Same would be for your resume. Um, a lot of times there's things that you know, are unexplained, but as a recruiter, our job is to look for those red flags. So why was this person off of work with no explained understanding or absence around why they were off for a year or two years or whatever it might be. Sometimes it's quite obvious that you're in school. Other times perhaps you went traveling. Other times perhaps someone was laid off from a job and it was just a difficult time trying to find another opportunity. And there's a great way to be able to explain that um, in your cover letter on when you're putting together a resume or in your LinkedIn profile. There's no harm in, in just putting a little bit of context behind why there was any gaps. Um, really important not to accept anyone and everyone that invites you to connect. Again, going back to that networking through LinkedIn in a really strategic way. Uh, important to know that the people that are going to be in your network are kind of a reflection of who you are as well and your um, interest in the industry that you're in, so making sure to be mindful of that. Um, this is a new strategy that I find a lot of people are doing these days is endorsing individuals that they've just connected with. I get this happening to me a lot where I'll have people who are interested in opportunities with ATB who I've never actually met in person or even had a phone conversation with who endorse me for skills and they actually don't know me at all. So it's a little bit awkward and, and I wouldn't recommend doing that to capture people's attention. Um, again, don't leave your LinkedIn bare. If I'm looking for candidates through LinkedIn um, and I see someone that hasn't filled out their profile, 
um, and doesn't have a really up-to-date profile or it doesn't have very many connections, chances are I likely won't spend my time reaching out or connecting to that person because it might get lost in cyberspace or a person may not look at it for months at a time. Um, and don't use your LinkedIn as Facebook, of course, keep it professional. There's a lot of um, issues with this lately with people posting very inappropriate things on LinkedIn that are not related to professional networks, so just keeping that in mind. And don't forget that being a creeper on LinkedIn, sometimes people forget that you, people can view when you've looked at their page, unlike Facebook, where it's kind of anonymous. With LinkedIn, it's, it's not necessarily so unless you set up your privacy settings that way. Um, it's one of the benefits, I think, of LinkedIn is having the ability to see who's connecting and looking at your page. Um, but just don't forget that people can, can see when you've looked. And so looking excessive amounts of times might, might be seen a little bit negatively sometimes. So going back to the publishing on, on LinkedIn, um, this is something that has done a significant amount for me in my own personal brand and my platform um, as a recruiter and my career coaching business. Um, and it's just done wonders for, for my own professional um, level of expertise and my confidence as a professional in, 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 the HR, in the HR world. So I always you know, say that if you picture yourself in your current um, state as a student and you know, ask yourself, what are you learning that made you think twice maybe made you question something, intrigued you in some way, shape, or form? Is there an area of interest you cultivated in school that you wish to dig deeper into? Perhaps you feel you have something to add in terms of a perspective that may not have been heard before. Um, you can write from the perspective of a millennial, from perhaps a woman in science and engineering, from that of an individual who's passionate about the learnings that you've gotten in your education, and that's a really perfect platform to express those ideas. The publishing on LinkedIn has immense benefits. Um, they become, those posts that you create become a part of your actual LinkedIn profile, which means you're going to continue to build credibility. You're going to be seen as somebody that has some ideas and that has kind of gone above and beyond to make sure that people know your opinions. Um, those published posts are shared with your network. So anyone in your network will get notification that you've just published a post. And if they like it, it'll go to their networks as well. So it builds out that trust and positions you again as a thought leader and you can really start to build a following that way. Um, published posts have the ability to reach a really large network um, of people and sort of expand the influence that you have as an individual, as one individual person. Um, I think I read somewhere that most of the content that is published on LinkedIn is just from everyday people and it gets a ton of traction. There's been some great success stories of people that you know never really saw themselves as thought leaders that have suddenly become an expert in an area. And even if you have to fake it till you make it, it's a really great platform to start exploring and experimenting with that. Um, they really showcase your expertise, allow you to build your network, and find and kind of plan your next career move because suddenly you're going to be seen differently from people in your network. And again, they, they serve as a great blogging platform without having to have that technical know-how um, or you know, desire to kind of do it on a very regular basis. And the ability with LinkedIn is you can actually follow people without actually being connected to them directly. So again, it increases your influence because anyone that might be following you will get notification of when you, you publish a post and, and new content appears directly in their news feed as well without actually having to necessarily be connected with that individual. So just one more quick video that I want to show you that showcases on the power of publishing on LinkedIn and, and a success story of somebody that has had you know, great success doing this. Do this again. And hopefully you guys can hear the content. And it doesn't seem to be working. So I'll just share that with you um, through the, the stuff that we send after, and I think if you have about two minutes to watch that video, it's a really great um, way to drive home uh, the power of the publishing platform on LinkedIn. And if this is something that you want to, to delve into, some things to consider and some, some tips to kind of keep in mind, um, just remember to always keep um, your personal brand in mind when you're publishing stuff. And again, remember that anything that you post, whether a published article, a response to something that someone has posted on one of your articles, 
even a status update. It's all visible and public, so really important to keep your professional brand in mind. What is online is always going to be accessible to um, those savvy employers and those recruiters that are looking for additional insight and information on you. Um, again, publish quality content that you'd be really proud to showcase. So take the time to deliver that quality over the quantity. Um, it's really important to make sure that you, you, know, you have the opportunity to um, connect with people in your networks to see if maybe you have a fellow student or someone, a, a someone that you trust to look through the content to get some advice, to check for spelling and grammar errors, just to make sure that it's, it's representing yourself in the right way. Um, I always think it's really important. Um, this is kind of an adult learning principle. Uh, you know, you're, you, you learn as adults in a very different way than you would as children, and so always remember that what's in it for me factor for your audience. So when you're writing, think about the audience on the other end of the, the screen and, and what is it that they're going to be able to get from the perspective that you're providing. And it's interesting as well to also include um, what we call call to action. So asking a question at the end of your post to start a dialogue um, is sometimes a really great way to start building a little bit of a community and connection around some of the things that you're saying. Um, one important thing that I learned um, is that headlines of the article titles are really going to be important. It's one of the most important things to be able to get yourself noticed. So you can think about um, if you're looking at a, at a newspaper, what are some of those headlines that are going to get you to think twice and to click uh, to read more? Because um, that's kind of where the power of the platform comes in is the more reads you're getting, the more opportunity for people to comment and for opportunity for people to share. And again, keep the conversation going. Start the dialogue if people are asking questions. Uh, be responsive in a really timely manner to ensure that you know, things keep, keep going and your, your conversation keeps flowing and, and things are, are continuing to be talked about. So just kind of to finish off here, um, there are some LinkedIn resources here that I kind of spoke about throughout the call. Um, how to stand out from the perspective of a new grad and a recruiter. Um, this particular link is really interesting. It's an individual who worked um, who currently works as a recruiter for LinkedIn, and he kind of walks through his experience from um, when he was a student and now in the position of being a talent acquisition person, and his perspective on two individuals that he met at a conference, one that had a really robust LinkedIn profile and presence and sort of utilized the tool in the right way, and another who didn't, and, and how he kind of saw those two candidates. Um, and how he was able, able to kind of become an advocate for one versus the other um, to his hiring leaders and, and her story and how she ended up getting hired at LinkedIn. So really great resource there. Um, LinkedIn also has some incredible profile um, builders and checklists and lots and lots of wealth of information for students. There's a whole university new grad platform on LinkedIn um, that's included there in that second link and then the profile checklist is a fantastic way to start if you're really just starting from scratch. Um, and at the beginning of the, uh, the presentation uh, on my introduction slide, I've also got a link to my blog as well. I've got about 12, 10 to 12 blog posts on there. Um, I haven't been very active on it in the last little while. ATB has kept me incredibly busy, but um, I think you could probably get some food for thought and some perspective from uh, the insight of a recruiter. Uh, you know, it, it hasn't been a super long time since I've been in your shoes. So I think um, my perspective and my storytelling and um, I think go a long way to give you some insight on, on how you can approach the same things and how you can really stand out in the right way. So we want to open it up to any questions that may have come up throughout the Facebook uh, platform as well as through the chat platform. You're welcome to type in questions. Um, you can also, um, we can unmute the line, and if anyone has any questions, um, you can jump in on the call as well. So um, maybe we'll start with any Facebook questions that may have come up. Yeah, so thank you to Janica and Sophia. I got both of your messages. Um, so we'll start with Janica's question. Um, she asked, how do you go about creating an online personal brand without coming across as a narcissist, <laughs> especially in social media? Or better, how do you share your achievements without sounding like bragging about them? Yeah, it's, it's a really fine line, I think. It's a really good question. Um, and it is about trying to find that fine line between being really confident but also being humble in how you speak about yourself. And, and I think you know, when it comes to online platforms, there really is 
be space to be able to talk about yourself in a, in a different kind of a way. And, and don't be afraid to highlight the things that you've done. Um, I think that there are a lot of people that do this really, really well, and, and it's really just about being genuine. So using language that showcases that you're really passionate about whatever it is that you're doing, because that passion piece is the thing that mm. I think distinguishes somebody who might be you know, really a go-getter but focused on climbing the corporate ladder or getting to the top of an organization versus somebody who's just really passionate and has a desire to develop learning and knowledge in a particular area. So I think by focusing your language on the passion piece and on your interest and how all of your accomplishments really showcase that this is something that you're focused on doing and, and becoming an expert in, and even including things like, you know, that you know that you're in this process of learning, um, you know you haven't got all the answers, that you're just wanting to take in as much knowledge as possible and connect with like-minded people. So putting in languaging that sort of alludes to some of those things is a really great way to sort of take out that, that perspective that it could be narcissistic or a little bit too overly confident. Um, I, I come across a lot of students that struggle with that as well and, and some that, that don't struggle with it because they don't realize and there's that lack of self-awareness. And I think by even asking that question, you demonstrate that you have self-awareness about you and you, I think that will naturally come across in your profile and I think just writing it in such a way that, that shows that is a really powerful way to do that and, and get that fine line. Great question, Janica. Um, so we have another one here um, from Sophia. I'm just wondering about LinkedIn profiles. Uh, would you recommend writing your profile in first or third person? I've heard some conflicting opinions and I'd love to know what you think. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll write it as if you're, you're talking to somebody, like, you know, when you're sitting down and having a conversation and, and ne never talk from, you know, Shazia does this and this. It's always so impersonal when people write it that way. So imagine that you're sitting across from someone that you trust or that you're talking to the first, for the first time, um, imagine you're having a dialogue and a conversation and write it from that perspective because the other way is, is really, it comes across as a little silly. Um, and I, again, you're right, people have different opinions, but I think if you're trying to create that balance of being really genuine and being true to yourself, it's, it's always better to talk about it um, without talking in that, that perspective of Jonah is this and this and, is, you know, it's different when it comes to something like a webinar where you're showing a biography of yourself. Um, on your LinkedIn, it's, it's really like a resume and you wouldn't write a resume that way. So um, keep the LinkedIn very similar to that. Awesome. Well, I know I need to go fix my LinkedIn profile now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so is there any other questions that anybody wanted to send through? You're welcome to go ahead and type up anything in the chat, and I'll just quickly unmute everybody as well. Anyone has a welcome to come on the call or in the There's a great question that just comes through. So do recruiters look less favorably upon people who establish their brand on Facebook or Twitter? Really great question. Um, uh, it's a really, really great question. Um, I, I don't think so. I think that um, when it comes to the, the platforms that you're using, it's really about anything that's going to be public. Um, to be frank, the first place we really do look is LinkedIn. Um, Facebook is probably something we look at as a secondary or, or you know, third kind of option for sort of getting to know a little bit more about that candidate. Um, but I think the more appropriate is probably going to be LinkedIn and Twitter. And so it's probably where you'd want to spend a lot more of your energy and time when you're building that kind of professional platform for yourself. And with Facebook, I mean, you've got the ability to change your privacy settings on each post that you put out. So if it is something that's related to your professional endeavors and you really want to showcase it to your network, um, I do this quite a bit when I put up a blog post, I will put it on my Facebook page um, because your family and friends are usually the first ones to be your biggest fans and so it's a great place to kind of start. Um, but I only make those particular posts pro, uh, public and everything else is private for my friends and family to see. And with Twitter, I think it's such a, it's a great way to distinguish yourself and, and my one recommendation is maybe create a separate Twitter account that's strictly focused 
on the things that you want to showcase professionally so that you don't have to kind of pick and choose every time you're posting stuff. Um, I think that's a really great way to, to separate it and make it easy for you to know exactly what to post and why, and that's typically what we're going to be looking at. And you, know, you still have to be careful with your professional or your personal Twitter accounts and what you're posting on Facebook because it, it will be kind of seen and viewed if it comes across in any of our searches. It'll be looked at potentially negatively if it's not favorable or if you're you know, showcasing party photos or whatever the case may be because uh, it's our job, like I said, to look for those red flags and to kind of look at the person holistically and how they're going to fit within an organization and fit within a particular leader's group. Um, so, so I think keeping those as separate as possible is, is a really great idea and um, creating opportunities to do things that are sometimes public and most of the time with your Facebook keeping that private and, and with your friends and family. But it's a great question. Anything else? Um, no? Okay, perfect. So another question um, regarding publishing posts on LinkedIn. Um, when we talk about our learnings and our posts, should we be avoid sharing too much personal experience or is it viewed as adding more strength to your writing? That's a really great question. Um, I'm a really big advocate of that vulnerability factor and, and sort of that relatability factor by using personal storytelling in the things that you're talking about. Um, I do that quite a bit in my blog post because I think it allows people to connect in a really different and meaningful way and you kind of bridge that gap. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of Brene Brown. She's done a lot of work in this kind of vulnerability space and there's that, that connection point that comes when people understand that you've been there too and it's like there, there's that point of connection when it's like, well, me too. I've done it. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. And so I think you balance it out. I think you kind of use your common sense and you, you see if there's something that might be oversharing, um, but you also kind of find opportunities where you can showcase a little bit of your experiences and your perspective and how it weaves into to your life. And one great piece of advice that I've, I've always utilized with my posts is have someone that you really trust in your life that will give you really honest feedback. So whether that's a friend, a sibling, a parent, um, maybe someone you work with who can look at your post and really just kind of vet them for you to see if it's on brand, if it sounds like it might be a little bit too much information or if it's something that um, is really going to resonate with people that you're, you're trying to target. But I think it's, it's a really great way to bridge the gap and, and build yourself as someone who's really genuine and authentic. So uh, I think it's a, it's a really useful tool to use in your writing. Any last questions? We have seven more minutes, so we'd love to try to use that up if you guys have anything else that's come up as well. Perfect. Um, yep. Yes. We'll just unmute you, Joan, just one second. Hello? Hi there. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Shazia, for this uh, for this informative talk. Much appreciated. Um, I just had a general question. I'm, I'm more so interested in the medical profession, and I guess this question applies to any related field. How would one customize these type of profiles, and at what point in their careers would you use this? Like, for example, would you try to create these unique profiles through LinkedIn as an undergrad student, or would this be geared more towards once you have a degree and you're trying to look for placements? And similarly, if you're interested in academic research positions, do you do this now as an undergrad, or is this more like if you're looking for positions as a postdoc or, or other like professorial opportunities, et cetera? Yeah, that's a really great question. I am a really strong advocate for doing this um, while you're still in school. Um, because I think what it is is that you're kind of surrounded in this environment where you're learning every day. You're kind of in that critical thinking mindset and you're not really as distracted. Maybe some of you might be by other external factors with, you know, trying to have a job and, and do all these things at once, but you're really immersed in it right now. And so it's an excellent opportunity now to be able to take advantage of that. And, and I think it's really going to strengthen what you're doing in your schooling and your education as well because you're you know, practicing writing skills and you're putting your thoughts together in a different way that isn't necessarily as academic. Um, and I think it just strengthens your confidence as a student and cements yourself as an expert. And doing it before you get out into the workforce um, is a really great way. I, I just met with someone before this webinar who um, has been a, a
graduate for a couple of years, new grad. She just graduated a couple of years ago from an HR program and has been struggling to find those opportunities. And she was hoping and, and wished in retrospect that she would have gotten in front of these kinds of opportunities beforehand because it would have given her a different opportunity to kind of cement herself as an expert and provide those relationships and those connections while she was so deeply embedded in her education. So I think it's a great right. to start now. Right. So you want to kind of get a get a I guess a heads up with the the idea, right? Yeah, program. and get in front of it and get in front of the competition because I'm telling you it's very, very fierce. It's very hard to yeah, get absolutely. noticed um otherwise, right? And and this is a really fantastic way to show initiative and Set yourself apart as someone who's really taking your career into your own hands. Okay. It, it's just almost adding to this because I think this is a great, a great opportunity to ask these questions. It's, it, for people that are, for example, interested in medicine, it's, the idea is that, you know, you're in an undergrad and then you apply to medicine and then once you're in, then you just follow the path that's kind of given to you. But obviously, mm -hmm. even throughout that path, you still have these opportunities where you can still network, which Absolutely. is the point, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and I think even for your applications for any higher education, yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah. they'd love to see that kind of stuff, right? It's not only recruiters or, um, you know, job seekers in the industry. It's also really great for your educational pursuits and, and distinguishing yourself in, in a really unique way. I think um, a lot of people don't take advantage of it, and I think it's a prime time to do it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Problem. Um, any other questions that we can answer as well? We've got about three minutes left before we let you guys get back to your evenings. And just a, a heads up that um, my contact information as well as Jonah's contact information are going to be on the slide deck. And so uh, we welcome any questions, any um, reach out that you want to do. Um, I'm totally open to you guys even looking at my LinkedIn profile to kind of get a feel for the way that I've built my profile um, and happy to have some, some creepers and views and, and some of those, you know, additional kind of perspective to give you a little bit of insight on, on how I put mine together. It's, it's not perfect by any means. It's definitely always a work in progress for me, but you can kind of get an idea of the way I've broken down my experiences and the way I sort of set up the profile, um, not saying that it's by any means um, perfect or, uh, you know, one to set the example, but there's probably a lot out there that you can find that um, showcase people's experiences in a really impactful way as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, I want to take the opportunity to thank Shazia so much for um, joining us on this webinar tonight. I think it provides a lot of really good insight as a lot of us are getting ready to graduate this year, med school applications. Mm -hmm or even on the blogging as, um, you know, we go forward this spring and maybe think about posting some content, whether it be on our own or through the Schulich Leaders Network um, by contacting David to post on our website. So I think this is a really good opportunity for us to all get some, some really good feedback. So thank you so much, Shazia, and no for putting this on. Yes, my pleasure. And um, we'll include the presentation. There is an infographic we'll include on LinkedIn. And yeah, I really encourage you guys to get in touch with David if there's chances that you want to start expressing your thoughts and, and doing it through the, the platform on the Schulich Network. I think it's a really great place to start um, and, and definitely gets you noticed for the right reason. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time and for your amazing questions. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you if you've got anything else that comes up.